When upgrading a telescope, the question of whether to go for the next step up in aperture is a common and critical consideration. Like when upgrading but instead of a 4 inch going for a 5 inch instead or 10 inches instead of 8 coming from a 6 inch telescope and so on. So basically is it worth chasing that extra step in aperture when upgrading? For many visual observers the answer is often a resounding yes. But the decision involves weighing significant trade-offs, particularly when considering Newtonian reflector telescopes. Now as it happens, I had a 12-inch dub for quite a while and then downgraded to a smaller 10-inch model because of multiple reasons I'll explain in a minute, but I distinctly remember the arguments I thought of when I decided to upgrade from my 8-inch dub back then. With these arguments I essentially convinced myself that going for a 10 inch the increase in optical performance would be too small and 12 inches would be a much better option, which in hindsight led me to the wrong choice. Let me explain. Now to better understand, let's take a look at what aperture is and how it influences the views for visual observations. A telescope aperture is its most fundamental specification. It's the diameter of the objective lens in a refractor or the primary mirror in case of a reflector and dictates two key factors for visual observations. Light gathering power and resolving power. Light gathering power is the amount of light the telescope collects and is proportional to the square of the aperture. A larger aperture collects more photons, resulting in brighter images of fine objects like galaxies, nebulae and star clusters. For example, increasing the aperture from 8 to 10 inches results in a 60% increase in light gathered, significantly brightening faint deep sky objects. This increase in brightness can be the difference between seeing a faint smudge and seeing distinct structural detail. Aperture also determines the telescope's ability to reveal fine details in separate close objects, a property known as resolution, and this tells us about the telescope's resolving power. The theoretical limit of resolution, the smallest angular separation the telescope can distinguish, is inversely proportional to the aperture. A larger mirror or lens can also better overcome the effects of diffraction, producing sharper and more detailed views, especially on the moon, planets and double stars. So to sum up, a larger aperture telescope shows you more objects, shows them brighter and shows them with finer detail. So why shouldn't you go for the maximum aperture within a specific budget? Well, because it's not all sunshine and roses. You see, a larger aperture might also come with a significant increase in weight, bulk, as well as indirect costs resulting from the need to upgrade other parts of the astro setup, such as eyepieces and accessories. And it's wise to objectively look at these negative effects before upgrading. Sticking to Dobsonian telescopes for a moment. A 10 inch or 12 inch Dobsonian doesn't just get heavier, it gets exponentially bulkier compared to an 8 inch. The diameter of the tube increases, but so does the required mass and size of the base to maintain stability. Also, while a daub is typically broken down into the tube assembly and a rocker box base, both pieces can become significantly heavier and more awkward to move around and fit inside a car for transportation. Looking at refractors, we can see a similar evolution. While a medium-sized 4-inch refractor will have no trouble being paired with an AZ Pronto or EQ3 mount, a 5-inch one will require a step up in mount stability. Here an EQ5 class mount is basically required. 
and for a 6 inch refractor an EQ6 mount is recommended if you want to keep those vibrations at a minimum, especially at high magnifications. Another aspect to keep in mind is thermals. A larger mirror or larger lenses take substantially longer to reach thermal equilibrium with the ambient air, a process known as cool down. This is important because before the mirror or lenses have fully cooled, warm air currents rise off its surface, causing internal tube turbulence that degrades image quality. In reflectors, this is called mirror seeing and the image will appear fuzzy or boiling. Time commitment is also an issue here because an 8 inch mirror for example might cool down in 30 to 45 minutes. A larger, thicker 12 inch mirror can easily take an hour or one and a half hours to stabilize depending on the temperature difference. This dramatically cuts into valuable observing time especially for impromptu sessions. Active cooling solutions in form of fans mounted to the back of the mirror cell become a necessity, not an option, for larger reflector telescopes. And then there is the question of how many of your existing eyepieces will work or make sense with a larger aperture telescope. With an increase in aperture, the focal length of the telescope usually also changes and eyepieces that worked well before and delivered optimal magnification levels might be too weak or too overpowering in combination with a different larger telescope. For example, a 5 mm eyepiece will deliver a magnification of 240 times in an f6 8 inch telescope, which is a decent value for nights with good seeing conditions. The same eyepiece will deliver a 300 times magnification in a 12 inch f5 telescope, which might be a bit too much if the seeing is not excellent. Another aspect worth mentioning here is that usually the larger the aperture, the faster the telescope becomes, expressed in a low f number. And the faster the telescope is, the more demanding it is going to be for the eyepiece to deliver well corrected images. So lesser eyepieces will struggle to keep the same levels of image quality when paired with faster telescopes. So all this means that investing in a telescope upgrade will likely also mean investing in new eyepieces as well, only further driving the total costs up. The initial jump from my 8 inch to a 12 inch telescope was stunning. The views were exponentially brighter and had more detail, a truly transformative experience indeed. Over time however, this initial excitement started to get overshadowed by a practical problem. I began using the 12 inch less and less. The instrument's sheer bulk and weight became a significant deterrent. I frequently chose to observe with smaller, less capable telescopes or skipped good observing nights entirely simply to avoid the heavy lifting. After a few years, I concluded that ultimately the 12 inch dub was the wrong upgrade. I eventually sold it and purchased a lighter, more manageable 10 inch flex tube Dobsonian. The 10 inch may reveal less detail and may not be that bright, but I use it significantly more often. My personal journey proved a valuable lesson. Bigger is not always better. The best telescope is the one you actually use. It's also important to remember that not all aperture upgrades come with the severe portability penalties often associated with Newtonian reflectors. There are classes of telescopes where an aperture increase has minimal practical drawbacks beyond the initial cost. Consider for example the upgrade path of maxtov cassegrain telescopes or of that of SCTs. For a long time the Skywatcher Skymax 102mm or 4 inches Mac was a favorite. A cheap, light and highly portable telescope providing decent planetary views. 
upgrading from this to a slightly larger Sfiboni 127mm Mac illustrates a near perfect scenario. The extra inch of aperture provides a visible increase in resolving power and delivers much brighter images due to the increase in light gathering capacity. Although the larger Mac costs significantly more, it is barely any bigger and marginally heavier than the 4 inch Sky Max. This means portability remains virtually unchanged. The thermal equilibrium or cooldown time remains almost as fast, and a slight increase in focal length from 1.3 to 1.5 meters means that my existing set of eyepieces and viewing habits still work perfectly. In such a case, where the telescope's form factor remains compact and stable, an aperture upgrade is worth it on all accounts, provided the financial investment is acceptable. Alright, before we wrap up this video, I would like to leave you with a couple of telescope recommendations, if you want. So these are the telescopes that when I'm not testing any particular gear, I'm almost always using for visual observations. So, when I want something relatively compact that can also provide some really nice and crisp views of the planets, I love using the SV503-102 ED refractor from Sfiboni. The images are bright, very sharp and have a lot of contrast to them. While there is some chromatic aberration visible in high contrast situations, it is almost negligible and the fact that it is bino viewer friendly and light enough to be attached to a lightweight mount like the AZ Pronto makes it perfect for quick and comfortable observing sessions. On the other side of the spectrum is my 10 inch flex tube from Skywatcher. It's a really nice light bucket capable of collecting a ton of light and providing sharp images. Contrast is also nice as well as the adjustable length for the optical tube. By lowering the upper part of the tube, the length of the path the light has to travel inside the telescope can be reduced considerably and this allows me to use a prismatic bino viewer without the need of any glass path correctors or bellows. Observing DSOs with both eyes simultaneously is something you can't live without once you tried it out. The only real downside of the flex tube is the weak standard focuser, which I recently replaced with a much better model. Now the flex tube is an extremely capable and versatile instrument. So when talking about aperture, it basically boils down to performance versus practicality. This is why when making your upgrade decision, be realistic with your observing routine. If you are upgrading a compact telescope like SCT or Mac, the increase in costs is usually the only major drawback, as portability and setup time remain consistent. In this case, go for the bigger aperture if your budget allows it. If you are upgrading a Newtonian reflector, the situation changes dramatically. If you plan to observe only from a dark sky location where you can leave the telescope semi-permanently set up, the larger aperture is the clear winner, even if you need to upgrade a couple of eyepieces in the process. But if you need to drive to your observing spot or even get outside to the backyard, the added weight and bulk of the bigger telescope must be carefully considered and weighed against the likelihood of you choosing to stay at home on a night when you're tired. In my opinion, an 8 inch telescope used 50 times a year is infinitely better than a 12 inch telescope used 10 nights a year, collecting dust between the observing sessions. All right, that's been it. I hope you'll enjoy the video. If you did, don't forget to hit like and subscribe as this is a somewhat subjective topic. I am very curious what your thoughts and experiences are when upgrading a telescope. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and catch you guys in the next one. Oh,